welcome welcome thank you so much for subscribing to this youtube channel okay so let's dive into it emil locon pirates are not to blame Nobel laureate professor wally shoinka was a rebel of some sort in his younger days he remains one even today there's a famous quote in his book the man died prison not of wally shoinka it says the man dies in him who keeps silent in the face of trying. This aptly describes his philosophy of life. Shinka was one of the founders of the National Association of Sea Dogs, Pirates Confraternity. He bequeathed a legacy of fighting injustice and bad governance to the association. They are still living up to that billing. Last week, the pirates went for broke. The sang and gyrated to a song during a procession. They did not mention any name in that song, but it was generally believed that they were mocking the presidential candidate of the All Presidential Pro Progressive Congress (APC), Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. For those who may have not listened to the song, the lyrics goes like this: Emilokon, Emilokon, Baba we know well. It they shout Emilokon, hand they shake, leg they shake. Baba we know well, it is shout Emilokon. So in, in English, it is interpreted, it is my turn, it is my turn. A sick old man is shouting, it is my turn. Hand is shaking, leg is shaking. A sick old man is shouting, it is my turn. End of quote. Uncharacteristically, Shoinika expressed disgust over this song. He described it as distasteful, seeing the culture he grew up in France at mocking physical disabilities. To an extent, he was right. Ordinarily, many Nigerians respect old age. They sympathize with the sick and do not mock physical disabilities. But in this instance, one can say the pirates are not to blame. Yes, so they are not to blame. An old man who can't lift something up. They need, to, they need to assist him to be able to hold a paper. I don't think it's fit to rule Nigeria. I don't, I don't know what you think or so. Let's continue. Although Shunika wants the sea dogs to keep quiet in the face of tyranny and bad governance inflicted on us by the APC and its leaders, Abio, does he want the malignant tumor of insecurity, corruption, and a collapsing economy bed evil in our country to remain unhealed in 2023? This is the question we should be asking, Shoinka. Why is he angry that we are insulting the number? We are just pointing out who he is. He is not fit to rule Nigeria. He's an old man. He should go and be taking care of his playing with his grandchildren, not coming and saying, Emiloko, Emiloko. Is it when all Nigerians drop dead that we will realize the enormity of the existential threat facing us as a people? God forbid. Yes, God forbid. Apparently, in deference to Shoinka and a few others who felt insulted by the song, the captain of the pirate, Mr. Abiola Owaje, issued a statement condemning those allegedly making political gains out of the video. Ironically, he added that the sea dogs are determined to continue to use our social programs, intellectual platforms, and our compelling songs to advocate for good governance and accountability. Yes, yes, this is it. In conformity with the ideas, the pirates released a song to warn against a bad woman. Tinimbo had fished and infested Fagot. Naturally, there was no way Lizard would not have paid him a visit. In the run-up to the presidential primary election of the ruling party in June 2022, Tinimbo met with his party stalwart in Abel Kota, the Yungu state capital. He narrated how he helped to install Muhammad Buhari as president of Nigeria after he failed three times to clinch the position. Looking desperate and angry, he thundered, Emilokon, meaning it is my turn. What insolence! Like, what infantry? Nigeria is no one's inheritance, so nobody should claim that it is our turn to rule. 
we are operating under a democratic setting. So the people that will rule are the people's choice. But it seems in Nigeria, the politics in Nigeria, those who are rich, those that have a say are those ones that rule. That's a sad thing. This sense of entitlement and desperation to become president propelled the former Lagos State Governor to Abuja, where he surprised keen observers by winning the primary election against her odds. He defeated younger and more agile aspirants like former Minister of Transportation, Otimi Amishi, and Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo. Even the Senate President Ahmad Lawan, who the national chairman of the party, Abilahi Adamu, had presented as a consensus candidate, lost to Ophili. Can you imagine? People that are well experienced want to rule. But the Jagaban says no. A little coin, it's my turn. This is his turn. Hmm. I don't really know the magic the number deployed, but some of the enemies of the APC allege that delegates appeared confused and dazed by the amount of dollars walking around Eagle Square, venue of the confession. Can you believe this man is so desperate? He wants to make use of whatever in his power to become the president. What are they gain in being the president of Nigeria? Nothing. But then there's some billions and trillions of naira abroad. God will punish all those that are suffering people. Whether one likes it or not, Tinibu is now the presidential candidate of the ruling party. He is a Muslim. He added insults to injury by selecting another Muslim and former governor of Bono State, Kashim Shetima, as his running mate. This has not gone down well with a good number of Nigerians, especially Christians. Why will he choose the Muslim Muslim ticket? You want to turn this country to a Muslim country. You want to Islamize this country. No wonder the European nations are standing on and saying they want to succeed from Nigeria. No wonder. The beauty of democracy, however, is that there is always a choice. The bad choices Nigerians made in the past are still haunting them today. Nigeria is blessed with enormous human and material resources, but poor leadership, which inflicted, which we inflicted on ourselves, has ensured that we remain at the bottom ring of the ladder in almost all indices of development. Yes, we inflicted this on ourselves. Yes, we are all suffering because of our bad choices, the choices we made years and years ago. I know we keep on making that same choice again and again when given the opportunity. Why? Hmm. Reflection has gone to the world's root stops. Unemployment, hunger, and poverty have combined to push many of our youth into banditry and sordid crimes. For six months now, and still counting, our children in the nation's public university have been at home because academic and non academic unions are on strike. Can you imagine? It's more than seven months now. Children have been at home because of strike. The government refused to pay the universities. Their salaries and they also have decided not to open universities till they are paid who would blame them how will you be working and you're not paid how are you going to feed your own children the government are not concerned they don't care about us their children are abroad studying have billions stashed in their account no wonder they are not concerned the majority of nigerians are not just tired they are gasping for breath Yes, this is why the European nation, we need to stand up. We need to stand for our right. Because if we don't stand now, our children are born are going to suffer the results of our bad choices. If we don't stand up now and fight for the last drop of our blood, our children from generation to generation will suffer this. Those who have the means are migrating abroad in droves. But those who don't have the means will continue to suffer until we all stand up 
against these people. Those who don't have the means are gnashing their teeth and praying that they don't fall victims to the appeal of kidnappers and terrorists who now parade every part of the country. Middle belt, Ilori. Everybody, they're crying, kidnappings here and there. Insecurity. Our government cannot save us. This is the time for us to stand up as a people. Europe and Asia, this is the time for us to stand up. Stand up and fight against those people. The situation is really bad and no amount of adjectives will qualify it. Much of the blame for this state of affairs falls on the ruling party, the APC. Tinubu is the national leader of the party. He is one of the architects of the misfortunes Nigerians have been going through. Age and good heads are not on the side. Yes, we can see it. The bad will not sleep right. The bad will always be judged. We can see. With all the billions, trillions of naira he has, with all the connections abroad he has, his health is failing him. Mm -hmm. That is it. In a sane country, he can never emerge as a presidential candidate. Yes, a normal country. A country full of educated people. Tinobu cannot emerge as a presidential candidate. But here we are, faced with the prospect of having another disaster on our hands. And so people want Nigerians to continue to suffer in silence. Who are those people that want us to continue in silence? Who are those people? The old man would have earned his respect if he had remained as a kingmaker. If he had retired to enjoy his old age peacefully, contesting for president this period, considering the baggage surrounding him would definitely subject him to scrutiny and ridicule. The truth is that whoever wants to rule Nigeria as it is now must be sound physically, mentally, and morally. The late President Umar Yaradura was sick. We were cajoled into voting for him. He didn't last in office as he died three years after assuming power. President Muhammad Obari assumed the mantle of leadership amid similar fears about his age and health. We have all seen his output. No need mentioning his trip to hospitals abroad. When he just came in, he was traveling all around, wasting our money on his health. Why, why contest for an election when you know you are not physically, mentally fit to be in that position? Why come in and waste our resources? Why? This is getting too much. You know, as if, I, if I can go on and on and on, we would sleep here. But let's comment. What is happening? Why are some people still supporting Tinubu when it is obvious that he's going there to cause havoc, to work havoc on Nigeria? Why are the urban nation leaders? Why are they quiet? This is what we should consider. This is what we should stand up and think about. If you have more comments, let's talk about this on the comment section. Let's talk about this. There are a lot of comments here. I don't want to start talking about them. Let's talk. Why is this happening to us? Please don't forget to like this video channel. And for those who are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please don't forget to click on the red button. Thank you so much for listening. God bless.